three days to our budget and that's on Thursday with um, the finance minister and I'm sure it's going to be an interesting one as growth has been the issues that have come up priority um, in virtually um, 10 years budgets behind. But President Kufuadu has been speaking in South Africa and his promised government will spend prudently ahead of the 2019 budget. He made the promise in South Africa as he engaged investors in on prospects in Ghana. So far, revenue shortfalls as of July was 3 billion cities and government budget has been concentrating on three areas that's interest payment, public sector wages and uh, earmarked expenditure. So we've just been wondering um, here at the business desk exactly how all of these spendings are going to be occurring especially when we have 100% of government spending really going into these three areas. And so we're concentrating on industrialization and Philip Namfuri is here um, to delve into that. Phil, Hello. how is government going to um, spend in these three areas and still be able to um, stay focused on its industrialization agenda? Okay, thank you very much. Um, from what you just read to us, there are three key areas in the budget that most of our revenues go. And in budgets past, each finance minister has identified the rigidities, as they call it, or structural rigidities in our budget. That's our compensation, that's payments to workers, interest payments, and earmarked expenditure. That's statutory payments, the GET fund, etc. And these three seem to consume, or not seem to, data has shown that they indeed consume most of our revenues. The finance minister, as I said, has alluded to this. The president himself, in one of his uh, speech to the nation's address, alluded to this fact. Now, what happens is that if we want to get our industrialization drive going, we are going to have to borrow to fill that gap or use innovative means such as public-private partnerships to fill the gap. We can't solely use our revenue to do this because it's going into three main line items and these are what some would describe as recurrent expenditure. Yeah, so the capital expenditure part, there's a problem. And if we have to fix that part, we have to borrow mm. or find innovative means such as public-private partnerships whatsoever mm. to do that. Even if you look at the banking sector reports on the Bank of Ghana, you realize that when it comes to industrialization, when it comes to mining, quarry, manufacturing, big sectors, the banks in Ghana are not lending as much as we would want to, mm -hmm. to go to these sectors for very obvious reasons, e.g. the short-term nature of our deposits, That's right. the risks involved in giving loans to these sectors. Mm -hmm. So if we want very active industrialization drives, then the men and women at the top have to find very innovative means. You know, we know we've seen in the 2017 budget, um, the one district, one factory plans, we That's saw right. a continuation of it. Mm. We've seen some commitment of funds by some financial institutions, etc. That's all well and good. But in order to see these things, these things rolling, there's got to be more money. But coming from government's coffers. Well, will that include the 50 year, um, the century bond, for example? Well, on the century bond, I'll stagger it here because uh, they said they're going to, we're going to see more of the highlights of it in the 2019 budget. Mm. So I'm itching, literally waiting for it, <laughs> yes, in the 2019 budget on Thursday. Mm. But we've also had some uh, think tanks, like the IFS, Institute of Fiscal Studies, right. cautioning government against this billion bond or mm. 50 50 billion or century bond, mm. uh, however you put it. Because one, it's going to increase our debt, very, very obvious mm. on the fact. And two, if we take these funds, if we borrow these funds, and we don't ensure that they go into the right areas, areas. the right capital expenditures, mm. projects that will pay for themselves, mm. then we're going to go back and forth. We'll come here and sit here next year and discuss the same thing, that our funds are going to recurrent expenditures. Yeah, but, but I have been pretty worried about even the interests that accrue on such bonds that we, we, we issue out there. Some. Um, for example, the SLAP bond was looking at close to about 20% of interest. And if we're going to do this over a period of 50 years, that's a lot of um, money that we will still use our budget to be paying virtually every year. Well, yeah, I like that. The interest payments is a very key component of our revenue expenditure mismatch. And you are, you are, you are very right. If we take such funds and we're going to use them, and they're not going to pay for themselves, then our meager revenues, are still, like you said, three billion shortfall, are still going to be used to service our debt over a period of time. So we must weigh the pros and cons of development and our fiscal 
uh, rigidities, as, as I may put it, and see which one best suits our current disposition. Such a bond, your macro fundamentals will need to be very stable over a long period, period of time, of time before you can consider... We're such gradually aging towards elections in 2020, exactly. 2019. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And we're also hearing that uh, it's not going to be issued at once. It's going to be put uh, maybe 10 years, 15, stuff like that. But even with that, we still have to get our fundamentals right, strong, in order to have such an issue once going forward. Thank you very much. Philip Namfuri has been delving into our spending issues in relation to industrialization as, you know, a government as we inch towards Thursday's um, budget reading. My name is Udilen Tiamwa. Let's make a data again at 12.30 whilst we bring you some other aspects of the budget um, reading. <laughs> Thank you.